Let's start by just sort of getting a sense of where you see small business today and whether you are worried from your perch uh, about there being a credit crunch. Sure. So I would say a number of things. You know, over the last decade, Goldman Sachs has really invested in small businesses. So we have an army, a wonderful army of 13,600 small businesses that we've worked with. They span all 50 states, uh, D.C. and Puerto Rico. And over the last three years, we've been surveying that group of small business owners to really keep a, a sense of the pulse of what their concerns, what they're experiencing, and what their needs are. And here's what I'm hearing. Uh, small business owners right now are nervous, right? They read the headlines just like you and I do. And so they're hearing a uh, credit crunch, um, rising inflation. They're hearing um, debt ceiling default. This is a scary time, and it is somewhat bewildering and challenging for small business owners. And they're saying two things. They're saying that we've got a bunch of concerns about the macroeconomic issues that we can't control. But they're also saying we're looking for practical strategies, uh, you know, so practical solutions to help growth and opportunity. That's why I have to say I love our discussion today, because it's really focused on those practical, you know, solutions and opportunities that can really help small businesses. I am pleased to say that we've reestablished connection with Kate Rogers, and I'm going to toss it back to her to continue uh, talking to you. Kate? Tyler, thanks so much. And Asai, thank you for being here. Great to see you. Uh, I'd love to dive back into the topic of the day, of course, which is the banks. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the current landscape for banking and lending on Main Street. I see mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs survey data shows about 77 percent of small business owners right now are concerned about the availability of capital. That's a huge number. Can you tell us more? Kate, you're exactly right. Now, let me take you back to a year ago. One year ago, when we surveyed that same group of, uh, you know, 10,000 small businesses graduates, and we asked them, you know, how do you feel about your ability to access capital? 77 percent of them said, I feel confident in my ability to access capital. Fast forward to today, ask the same question. Small business owners around the country say, in fact, 77 percent of them, that same number, say that I'm concerned about my ability to access capital. So they mm -hmm. went from confident to concerned in the span of 12 months. Now, what's driving that? When you look at where small businesses tend to get their capital, they tend to get it from smaller banks, right? Small mm -hmm. businesses rely on small banks. And so we can't overlook the fact that the, you know, banking, uh, you know, crisis and concern over the last several months is driving some of that concern by small businesses about whether they'll be able to really access capital. And, you know, if you want to expand your business, if you want to fix that equipment that's, you know, you know uh, faulty, um, you're going to need to go to a bank to get capital. And that's really driving some of the concern that we're seeing from small business owners across the country. And we have many small business owners, of course, joining and watching. Any actionable advice right now for owners who might be concerned about the safety of their capital or their access to capital, their ability to get that loan to invest and expand? What can you tell them? Absolutely. Here's what I'd say. I actually have a three-part playbook, and it starts with, you know, know your banker. Now, there's an amazing business owner that I met. I travel around the country, and the, I have the privilege of talk, talking to small business owners every day. And she said to me, the worst time to meet a banker is when you need capital. And what she meant by that is you have to have an established relationship. You want to build those roads. You want to set the pipes up so that when, in fact, you may need to go to a bank to access funding, they know who you are. They understand your business. They know that you're right there in the community employing individuals and really providing a, a good or service to the community. So I would say make sure that you're calling your banker and that you're establishing or reestablishing, if you haven't called in a while, that relationship. Update them on what's going on with your business. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would say in that toolkit is know your financials. Now, Business owners tell me time and time again they, you know, fail to confront. They have a certain amount of discomfort with, you know, going into their financials. Um, I would say over the next couple of days, take the time to really review your numbers. What's happening with your receivables? What's going on with your cash flow? There are few guarantees in life, but I will give you this guarantee. You will feel more empowered to steer your business in this time of uncertainty when you take the time to really do what can sometimes be uncomfortable, which is mm -hmm. break into all the numbers and really understand the financials of your business. The number one thing that comes back to bite business owners 
later on tends to be something hiding in the numbers that they didn't take the time to look at. So one, talk to your banker. Two, know your financials. And the third thing I'd say is really know your customer. This tends to be the fun part of your business. This is someone who comes to your business, they like your product or service that you offer. Look at that customer profile, really understand their priorities, put yourself in their shoes. Are there additional offerings or ways that you may need to adjust or pivot your business to really meet the needs of your customer and really meet them where they are? And mm. I'll just offer a fourth bonus one. I did say three, sure. but I'm going to offer a fourth bonus uh, tool for this particular time, which is tap in to your small business besties. Now, what do I mean by that? I hear this over and over again from small business owners. It's lonely. Um, a number of you are probably, you know, in a room by yourself. You're at your computer right now on Thursday, tuning in to me and Kate to get some strategies. This can be a lonely enterprise. And so having other entrepreneurs who are going through the same thing that you can share strategies with, that can tell you about things that, you know, programs that are being offered, conversations that they're having that could be helpful to you is absolutely, absolutely critical. So tap your small business besties. I love that advice. Thank you so much. Uh, another key concern we know is inflation and interest rates. The Federal Reserve obviously top of mind after uh, the meeting this week. What does that all mean for Main Street? We hear it all the time that inflation and high prices, they're not going down anytime soon, and that's really weighing on sentiment. What are you hearing? That stubborn inflation, mm -hmm. right? 71% of our business owners say inflationary pressures have actually increased in the last three months. We all saw yesterday the Federal Reserve raised interest rates again for the mm -hmm. 10th time <laughs> since March of 2022. Now, one might say, okay, great, raise interest rates so we can better combat inflation. But when you increase, you know, um, interest rates, you're also increasing for small business owners the price of borrowing, which means, you know, if you need to get a loan from a bank, it's going to be more expensive to mm -hmm. do that. So all of that, it's, it's a bit of a tightrope, really, that small business owners are trying to navigate. They want inflation to go down, but obviously they don't want to have to pay more to access capital. And finally, labor. That's always been a part of the picture. It's kind of dropped a bit lower in terms of top concerns for small business owners, at least in our own data. But we know that it's impacting the ability to grow and expand. And, you know, attracting and retaining workers is always top of mind. Any advice that you have there for owners who are really searching for the right people to run their business? This is such an important point for you to touch upon because across all 17 surveys, if there is one thing that we've heard time and time again <laughs> consistent is the inability to really hire and get the employees that small businesses need. I was talking with a small business owner in Atlanta, and, you know, she talked to me about ghosting. Now, I've heard about ghosting a date. I have never heard about ghosting an interview, but that's what I'm hearing from small business owners across the country. They're being ghosted even for interviews to get employees. In fact, 78% of small business owners that we surveyed say they can't find qualified applicants for their open positions. And so this factor is really, you know, really adversely impacting businesses ability to grow, to expand their business and to really take advantage of the full, you know, opportunities that opportunity set that might be available to them. That is incredible. Ghosting for uh, interviews and positions is really something else. Just to wrap it all up, we've touched on a lot here. Obviously, the banking system, inflation, ghosting on uh, positions that you're looking to fill. But what would your top advice be right now for small business owners who are listening in and wondering how they can best weather the storm? You know, I go back to that knowing your financials, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I love the, the topic of this session, which is about growth and opportunities for small business owners. You're going to find something in those numbers, something in those receivables that's going to help you in terms of your strategy. Maybe you're overstocked on this particular product. Maybe there's a customer, a big customer that hasn't come back to you in a while, and you're like, oh, that customer, you know, placed a big order. Let me go back and see what's happening there. And so taking that time, um, which I, as I said before, can be pretty uncomfortable from time to time, to really go through your numbers, you know, get to working, uh, get from working in your business to working on your business, and a review of the financials is the first step to really working on your business instead of in your business business.